In this video, we're going to set up our Spring Boot project so that we can start working on our inbox application and have it connect to Cassandra. A typical way to get a Spring Boot application started is by going to Spring Initializer, which is start.spring.io. You can choose your options there, what are the dependencies that you need, and then click a button and you get this zip file. You can extract, you have your starter Spring Boot project, right? For this particular course though, I'm not gonna go to the Spring Initializer. I'm actually gonna start with a GitHub repository that I have, which is this guy, Spring GitHub Login Starter, all right? This is a simple starter Spring Boot project that I've created, which uses OAuth for authenticating. And the OAuth provider is GitHub, right? It connects to GitHub and uses GitHub's authentication mechanism to authenticate the Spring Boot application itself, right? The reason I'm doing this is so that I don't have to mess around with, you know, user IDs and passwords and password forgot flows and registration flows and all that stuff, right? Uh, so this has Spring Security and it has the uh, placeholder in the properties file to fill in the the GitHub application ID and all that stuff, right? Uh, what I also have here is this uh, readme over here, which tells you what you need to do to get this thing set up and running. Um, I have explained this whole process in the previous series where we did the better reads application and the steps are literally the same. So I'm gonna bring in the past Kaushik to explain these steps that you can follow along and by the end of this video, you will have a Spring Boot project which can authenticate with GitHub and you're ready to build an authenticated application. Feel free to skip this video if you like, just follow the instructions and then you should be able to connect to GitHub. Or if you want step-by-step -step instructions, I will let Past Kaushik take over. He's gonna guide you through the process. And after that, the next video on, we will have a project ready that you can use for connecting to Cassandra. So I'll see you on the other side. So this is a Spring Boot project, which has GitHub login via OAuth baked into it. It's a very, very simple project, okay? Uh, I'm gonna link this in the video. What this does is basically provides a URL where you click on it, you can authenticate via GitHub, okay? If you have a GitHub login, you can log in via GitHub and then the, the application, the Spring Boot application that you have here, knows that this is you, this is you with this particular GitHub login, right? Why GitHub? Just a random choice. Uh, it's, um, we are all developers, so we probably have GitHub ID. This could very well have been a Google authentication or a Facebook authentication, it really doesn't matter. Some authentication so that we don't have to deal with like creating the login form, the sign up form, the password reset, all that stuff, right? So this kind of makes it simple. And I'm gonna start with this. And I'm going to show you what this is right now and how, what this looks like. I'm going to just download this as a zip file. Uh, I don't want to clone this thing. I'm going to open this. And um, here is my project that I'm going to open in code. So I have a new Visual Studio Code window. I'm going to trust in the first screen that shows up. And here it is. New VS Code window with this project doesn't, again, like I said, it doesn't have a full line. It has two Java classes. Uh, first, let's look at the pom.xml. It has a bunch of dependencies. It has this say, Spring Security Starter, which you would expect it's needed because it's Spring Security after all, right? Next, we have the time leap dependency because I have like a simple page which shows, hey, click here to authenticate via GitHub. And then it just authenticates via GitHub. It's just there. You don't have to use it. You can have it be an API as well, if you like. Uh, next is the Spring Web dependency. So Spring Web application after all. So you get Spring MVC and all that stuff there. Uh, you have the Time Leaf extras, where it's basically Spring Security integration with Time Leaf. We want to do like user ID password forms. When you have like an HTML form and you need to submit it, when you have a non-authenticated application, it's just a simple form, a simple post, works fine. But when you have Spring Security and you have a form which does a post, you need to make sure you have cross-site request token enabled in the form. Okay, so this allows you to do that. You get that cross-site request token automatically there, and you can add, there are certain tags which allows you to customize it. So your application is secure for a bunch of hacking uh, vulnerabilities that people will 
try and exploit if you have like a logged in application. Okay, so that's why this is good to have. Uh, we have a Spring Boot OAuth client and OAuth Jose, which are uh, like this for the JWT part of it. So when you have uh, OAuth authentication requirements like uh, OAuth with Google or OAuth with Facebook, or in this case, OAuth with GitHub, these are the two dependencies that you would need. So I have those and, uh, you know, DevTools and test. Nothing else of importance here. So here is the uh, the home project. This is the main uh, Java class, all right? So I have a simple spring application dot run. This is what you get kind of out of the box. We have one user API, right? It's a, it's a REST API, which uh, takes in the authenticated principle. So this is accessible only when somebody is logged in, okay? So it takes in the authenticated principle and then it gives you what the name of the authenticated user is. Principle is the authenticated person, right? So it's going to give you the name of the user. So this is accessible when you're authenticated, okay? And now we have the security adapter, which is controlling what is the authentication mechanism over here. So we have a bunch of authentication uh, configuration over here. So there is a configure method with a bunch of authentication configuration. It's basically saying, hey, when somebody has access to the slash URL, which is a root URL or error message URL, permit everybody, okay? Apart from that, any other request needs to be authenticated. Okay, there is some exception handling here. There is some CSRF handling here. So like make sure that cross-site request forgery is protected. And then log out is when you're, when you're logging out, go back to the slash and then permit all for that. And now with this configuration, how is the user getting authenticated? It is by the OAuth2 login, all right? And uh, how does this login work? Well. We're going to go to resources and application.yaml. Here are the configuration for login. So since we're logging in with GitHub, we need the client ID and the client secret for authentication. We are asking GitHub to authenticate for us, which means GitHub needs to know that there are authentication requests coming from our application to it. So we need to go to GitHub and say, I'm going to configure my application. And I'm going to say, this is uh, get the client ID and the client secret. So GitHub knows that this is a valid source of authentication that's coming from there. And with OAuth, you know, it needs to kind of do this handshake between the user and saying, hey, the user, this application is trying to authenticate via me and uh, just want to make sure that you give uh, the right permission, right? So it's the normal dance that happens with OAuth. If you're not really sure about this, if you're not familiar with OAuth, definitely check out my OAuth tutorial that I explain this in detail, kind of explain what are the three parties involved and what the communication is. But this is basically telling GitHub that this is going to be a request and then getting those tokens and adding it over here so that this application can make an OAuth call to GitHub. So this is the bare minimum OAuth sign-in application that you need to have to authenticate with GitHub. With Facebook, it's going to be similar, like just like you have GitHub over here for Facebook, it's going to be the Facebook's client ID secret. For Google, it's going to be Google's own thing. I'm going to demonstrate with GitHub. Right now, if I run this, it's not going to work because it doesn't need the client ID and the, it doesn't have client ID and client secret. Let's set that up and that should be it. This is going to run as is. Okay, so how do you tell GitHub to create a new application? Well, you can do that by going over here to this drop down and then choosing settings. And here you will find all of the developer settings that you have over here, right? So there's a bunch of stuff um, over here, developer settings. So here are all the applications that you have, all the GitHub applications that you have. You can see here I have a better reads application already because it was trying something out. This is what I'm going to be using for the recording, but I want to show you how you can create a new GitHub app yourself, right? So you click on this new GitHub app and then give the app a name. I'm going to call this better reads test. Uh, the homepage can be anything you want. Um, this is basically when you have uh, the OAuth message box that the user sees. They want to know what is the app that's requesting this access, right? So that's the reason why you have this. Uh, now, as far as uh, the callback URL is concerned, I have actually have that in the instructions. So you see here in the readme.md, I have the callback URL specified. So this is the URL that GitHub is going to call back when the OAuth 
handshake is happening. So this is going to be available on your local, like when you run your Spring MVC, Spring Boot application, this URL is going to be enabled. That's URL will accept requests. So basically this is uh, GitHub saying, hey, browser, go call this thing now, right? So your browser is going to call this. This is, of course, something that works only on your machine, but that's fine for development this is what we're going to be using. Uh, the other thing that I would recommend you do is uncheck the active box because we don't want to do a web hook URL. But remember, if this is active, you notice this becomes mandatory. You have to specify the web hook URL, but we want to do that. So I'm going to uncheck it. Now, the last thing you need to do is set the permissions, right? What are the permissions that your web application needs? Well, if we scroll down here, I don't need any of this stuff, right? We're not doing anything on GitHub itself. What we want is the user information, right? So that we can trust that this is one single user. So I'm going to say here, email address. I'm going to say read only email address. Just show me the email address so that I can map it to a user on my application. I'll set profile as read and write. I don't know if this is required. Probably not. If I just get the, uh, the username with the email address thing, then I don't even need that thing. I'm going to choose any account here and then say create GitHub app. Let me see registration is successful. And here is my client ID. Okay, so I'm basically, I can take this and paste this to the client ID in my application.yaml file, right? This part is going to be that client ID. The client secret is something that I need to generate over here. When I say generate new client secret, you see this? It generates a new one. Now I can copy this and paste this there. I'm going to delete this thing because I actually don't want to uh, have this app here. Um, I'm going to go, go to advanced and then delete this thing uh, and delete better reads test. I'm going to use the app that I already have, like I mentioned, which is this guy. It basically created the app using the same mechanism. So I'm going to first copy the client ID over here to this client ID. Again, the whole point of this is to tell GitHub that we are authenticating with this thing. Client secret, I'm going to generate a new client secret and then copy this thing and then paste this here. Uh, I am, of course, going to delete the client secret after I am uh, done recording this tutorial so that you know, others don't use it, but you're going to have to do this yourself, right? You need to generate the new client secret. And whenever you refresh this page, this thing is gone. You won't be able to see this. You notice that this thing is, you know, you have stars here. It doesn't show the entire client secret. That's intentional. You see this? That thing is gone. So you're going to have to copy and save it and assume that it's not going to be visible again, right? You have to delete and create a new one if that's, if that's gone. All right, so here we are in our Spring Boot application, and now I can um, actually run it like this. So let's test this and make sure this works, okay? So here is my, if I open the resources, te resources template index.html, this is basically the simple time leaf template, right? It has this login with GitHub message, and then we have a ahref, which has this link, right? This is the link which starts the login process with GitHub. So let's see if this works. I'm going to click run and start this application. So the application is up and running. Now I'm going to go to localhost, colon 8080, and I get this uh, message, which is the uh, which is from that index.html. So I'm going to click here, log in with GitHub. Now, looks like it's logged in. This has happened before, I guess. So that's the reason why it's, it's already logged in. If you're logging in for the first time, you would probably see uh, like an authentication box. But uh, now let's see. I'm going to access this API, which is the slash user API, and it should print out, it should return the name. All right. So I'm going to do a local CTAD slash user and see it prints out the name. It returns the name of the person who has logged in via GitHub. So the way it's happening is now when I clicked on that link, the authentication was established. And over here, when this user URL is accessed, which is what I'm doing over here, it is getting the principle. It's kind of, you know, uh, declaring a dependency on the principle saying, hey, Spring Boot, inject to my, this method called the principal object, which is the object that represents the currently logged in user. So I'm printing this out to the console and I'm also returning this. Now you see the console should have the whole principal object printed. So here it is. It has 
all the granted authorities. It has my login, which is my username, the ID, a bunch of other stuff, links to other things. Well, everything is here. All I care about is the name. So that should do. Now with this in place, I have an application, a Spring Boot application, which does login with GitHub. Okay, now that you have a Spring Boot application set up, which can do OAuth login, we're all set to build our inbox application with this code base as a starting point. I'm going to check this in so that this is going to be the first commit in this repository. But uh, I'm going to make a couple of changes before, or mainly housekeeping changes, all right? So what I'm going to do is first change the name of this class. This is not um, Spring GitHub login application anymore. I'm going to call this the Inbox app, and uh, it is going to refactor and change the name of the file as well, because I have the Java extension pack in my VS code editor, which is the editor that I'm using here. Uh, if you're choosing some other editor or some other IDE, I'm sure there are some refactoring uh, features available there, which allows you to do just that. Uh, the other thing is if I go look at the Spring Boot dashboard, you see here it says GitHub Auth template. I'm going to go to my pom.xml. And I'm going to change the name of basically of this artifact, right? I'm going to call this inbox app. And uh, if I were to reopen this application, reopen this code base in the editor, you should see that the name is reflecting as a inbox app and not the, the template name. If this still doesn't work, what I recommend you do is click on this dot, dot, dot here for Java projects and then click on clean workspace. It's going to re-import the project uh, in the Java language server uh, that VS Code has, and then you're going to get the updated project name. Not a big deal, but I like seeing inbox app over here where it's supposed to be, all right? So uh, with this, I have done some uh, basic cleanup work. Uh, I'm going to... Um, do one last thing, which is the inbox app name in the readme. It's not going to have a whole lot, but I'm going to uh, commit this. I'm going to initialize repository, which is equivalent to running git init. Here are all the files that are being checked in. There are a bunch of files that I don't need. One is the .men. So I'm going to remove those. All right. Going to go up here and then remove .men slash so those go away and then uh let's see if there is anything else yeah everything else is good to go right so i'm going to commit this and i'm going to call this a uh, spring right so this is going to be the starting point if you don't want to do all this stuff you can basically just get this as is and and use this the thing that you're going to have to fix though is the application.yaml file right so this is going to be with your um, client ID and, oops, there's going to be your client ID and client secret that you created from uh, GitHub. And I have to put that thing in there. But otherwise, this code base is really good to go for you to start working.